Okay, welcome back. Here we're going to look at an exercise of sampling distributions, this time of p bar. So we're looking at uh, sample proportions instead of sample means. The exercise is entirely similar uh, to working with sample means. The only difference really is how we calculate the standard error. Uh, and so you'll see that um, shortly. So what we're looking at here, I've just again pulled some information from my university's website just to give us something to work with. So here we have a student population of 25,748 students. Of those, 2,635 are international students, and we're going to work with a sample of 100 students. So first part A, what is the expected value of P bar? Well, just like when we're working with means, and we had sample means, the expected value of the sample mean is mu. Well, similarly, the expected value of the sample proportion, well, that's going to be equal to the population proportion as well. And here we have enough information uh, that we can actually figure out what that is. I've got uh, 2,635 students out of 25,748. So the expected value of P bar is going to be 2635 divided by 25,748, and I get 10, 2. So this is, means about a little over 10% of the student population consists of international students. What is the standard error of P bar? So again, this is similar. So looking at distributions of sample proportions uh, within a given population. And for this one, you know, the, the formula is very much the same. Uh, we have this population correction, or the um, finite population correction factor, and we multiply that by this little thing here. And same rules apply as far as uh, sample size or the size of the finite population. Uh, given that our finite population is sufficiently large, especially compared to our sample of 100. Uh, we don't need this. Uh, same rule if, if the finite population relative to the sample, uh, if this is less than or equal to 0.05, then we can get rid of that finite population correction factor. So that's what we're going to do here. I'll do it even better. I'll just get rid of this. And so there's our formula. Uh, that we're going to use for our our standard error, just because our finite population is so large. So if we just put in our our values, this is 10 2 times 1 minus 0.102 divided by my sample size is 100. So if I get my calculator here, 10.2, uh, uh, sorry, 0.102 times open brackets 1 minus. 0.102 equals, divide that by 100, and take the square root of that, and I get 0 0.030. So there's my standard error here, sigma p bar is 0 0.030. Okay, what is the probability that a sample proportion will be within 0 0.05 of the population proportion? Same exercise we've done with sample means. Again, I'm going to have my two distributions. This one is centered on the population proportion, and this one is my standard normal. So this is the population. This is my standard normal. And here I want, to f I want to determine what's the probability of getting a sample proportion within 0.05. So this is p plus 0.05. This is p minus 0.05. And so again, we need to translate that into our standard normal. I'm just going to shorthand this, divide that by the standard error so that we can obtain those two Z scores, Z2 and Z1, that correspond uh, with our population proportion. Now in order to get the, the, the probabilities, what we need to then calculate is this space here. The area between, between those two. 
And given the cumulative nature of our distribution tables, I'm actually first going to calculate the probability, all of this, the probability less than Z2. So let me uh, just write this out. The probability between Z2 and Z1. So the probability that Z is between Z2 and Z1. Uh, there we go is equal to the probability that Z is less than or equal to Z2, so that's the yellow region that I've just shaded, minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to Z1. So then from that yellow space, we need to subtract off this space here, and we're left with our yellow space of interest. So we need to figure out what is Z1 and Z2. I'm just going to clean up some space over here. And here we go. So Z2, I'll start with Z2. So our, our difference is this space between P and P bar, this numerator, uh, is point, plus 0.5 and negative 0.5. So for Z2, that interval is positive 0.5 divided by the standard error, which we've calculated here already, 0 0.030. So this is going to be 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.03, 1.67. And so you can imagine what Z1 is going to be. The only difference is that that numerator is negative. This is negative 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.03. And so this is going to be negative 1.67. Okay, so now I just need to calculate the probabilities that correspond to that. So here I'm, I'll change out these numbers. I have this is negative 167, positive 167. Same here. This is positive 1.67, and this is negative. What's going on with my eraser here? There we go. Negative 1.67. So we need to figure out what those probabilities are for that. Of course, we need our Z tables. So let's go here's negative. Uh, let's get the positive first, be consistent. Uh, 1.67. So those come together. Here's 0.9525. So this is 0 0.9525 minus negative 167 is up here, negative 167, and that's going to be 0 0.0475, 0.0475, and so that gives us 0.9525. Minus 0 0.0475, 0 0.905. So there we go. Pretty high, pretty high probability. 90.5% uh, chance that if I take a sample of 100 students, that I will be within 0 0.05 of the true population proportion. Okay, good. Uh, part D. If we increase the sample size from 100 to 300. What does that do to our probabilities? So let's go through a few more calculations. I'm just going to erase the blue because we're going to need to recalculate some of these values. Uh, and I'll start from scratch up here. So what we need first, we'll need our new standard error. The numerator is not going to change. We're still looking at a gap of 0.05. But we need a new standard error because that's that's what's affected by the sample size. So that new standard error is going to be still p times one minus p over n. Those proportions haven't changed. That's our population proportion. 1002 times one minus 0.102, and now here's where that 300 shows up. So our new standard error. Where'd my calculator go? 
0.102 times 1 minus 0 0.102 equals divided by 300 equals, and then we'll take the square root, and I have 0 0.017. Okay, so now when we go and calculate our z values, this is going to be, well, we'll have plus or minus 0 0.05. I'm going to kind of shorthand this a little bit. Plus or minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.017. And now this is going to give us 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.017. 294 plus or minus 294. So here's my negative 294, positive 294, there's 294, and negative 294. So when we get our probabilities now, we'll go to our z tables. Uh, let's start at the positive 2.94, let's move this up just a smidge, there's 2.9 so that gives me 0.9984. So this is 0 0.9984 minus, let's go back to our tables down to the negative, 0.294, and there's 0 0.0016. Zero zero sixteen. That's going to give us point nine nine eight four minus point zero zero sixteen equals nine nine six eight. Nine nine six eight. So, what do we learn? Increase that sample size, and we increase our probability of being within some range of the true population proportion. Uh, it was the same thing we saw when we were looking at sample sizes. The larger is the sample size, the more representative, the more information is contained in that sample, so the more accurate it will be in predicting the population parameters. So in this case, if we increase our sample size from 100 to 300, it increases the likelihood, the probability, that we'll be within some specified range of the true population proportion. Good. I hope that that was helpful. Um, lots of little math, lots of, um, lots of little calculations, but uh, hopefully by this point we've done enough of these exercises with the tables that uh, it's becoming easier and easier to, uh, to follow and calculate these probabilities. Okay, good. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.